Hello and welcome to Sarvagun Sampan. This show is dedicated to celebrating the unique identities of women of Indian origin across the world, around the globe. This is the first episode and I'm really delighted to welcome uh, a woman who is extremely rooted in her cultural values and traditions. She really cares deeply for those and also wears her passion for her art on her sleeve. Please join me in welcoming Sudha Totapalli to our very first episode on YouTube. Sudha, welcome to Sarvagun Sampan. So delighted Thank to have you. you. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'm honored that I'm the first person in your show and uh, really, really appreciate you having me in your show. Very welcome. Sudha, um, let's start with our first segment of this show. And uh, we have a couple of segments for this. The first one is uh, Bachpan Ki Vati, Bachpan Ki Din. So this is about uh, reflections of your childhood days, uh, your influences, early influences, and what really helped you become the person you are today. So why don't you go ahead and take us down the memory lane? Oh, absolutely. Thanks for, again, thanks for having me. And then, uh, that's uh, one of my, um, should say, precious, precious moments. Uh, I, I would like to share some of them. Um, my biggest influence is, has, and will be my father and my mother, both of them. They are like my strongest pillars. Um, recently, I lost my dad, but, um, well, it was seven years ago, but still, it's recent for me. But um, my father, he, by profession, he's a professor in mining engineering, but he is a dramatist. He's an artist. He's a script writer. He's a, um, you know, um, actor. He's everything I know. So, and he used to have um, um, association called Seven Star Syndicate, apparently, and they used to meet different artists at that time. But my influence from him or what I have learned from him is you can do whatever you want. There is no boundaries to it. And that's where I have learned um, this. That I think that has inculcated this art into me, I, I should say. Uh, and my grandfather also is a, he's an, um, an all India radio artist. And then he used to live in Kakinada, which is the coastal area of uh, Andhra Pradesh. And then that's where I did my, uh, um, I should say, beginning of my, uh, you know, first foot into this art, which is called dance. I've learned uh, both Kuchpudi and Bharatanatyam from um, my gurus. Uh, there are so many, there's so many people who influenced me, but um, that's where, so when I was like, I think four is when I started learning Kuchpudi. And then um, I went through different phases of Kuchpudi and then I moved to Bharatanatyam, I did Bharatanatyam and then I moved back to Kuchpudi, I did masters. But Kakinada is where I just started and then my childhood was mostly in Kharagpur, which is not because my dad being a professor, he was, he did his PhD in uh, IIT Kharagpur and that's where I grew up until my nursery or you know childhood, until I think um, primary education. And, and then I moved to Kottagudan from there, and that's where my, you know, teenage uh, started during that time. And then um, it's, it's been uh, quite a journey learning all of this. So at any stage of my life, art was there. So that has been a greatest influence on me. My mom is a violinist, so she, and she's a homemaker. She has answered to everything and that's that's the biggest um, advantage for me and like I she's my go-to person and even now I go mom this is what is happening she says calm down everything will fall in place you believe in yourself everything will fall in place and that's what I still believe in and in my culture so um, and in in this process I have my dad has not ever said that you can't do this he says you try I'll be there to hold you if you fall. 
but unless you try you wouldn't know so that's how i did you know so many other different things and then i found my you know ground in uh, classical form and then apart from that i did my it courses also the pgdca and because of this all changing world he said you know you need to have this one as well so as i told you he's my guiding torch or guiding pillar at any given time so you know if you keep on talking i i cannot stop so but yeah that's that's my you know memory line uh from kakinada to kharagpur to kothagodam to hyderabad and now in usa <laughs> that's wonderful and you know uh, so it's it's really true you you are uh, a product of your environment and um, you know obviously your parents have done a remarkable job of cultivating that deep love for uh, culture and arts in you so kudos to them and uh, it's it's wonderful we'll move on to se- next segment uh, which is ye kahan gaye hum so we're talking about uh, you know people get married uh, and move relocate uh, sometimes to different countries to different cities so talk to me about your uh, journey uh, from india uh, to the united states and uh, what were the initial experiences like uh, what kind of struggles and challenges did you face in adapting uh, and acclimating to a new culture and new climate um you actually put all that in one place already so um as as i told you before i'm i moved from one place to another place when i was in jaipur so the one thing which taught me or which my mom and dad told me is you have to adapt a new culture at any given time so the only thing which is constant i would say is the change so that is the only thing which is constant so you have it's up to you how you take it or how you adapt to that culture so um I was in Kharagpur I did um you know learn different culture in there because it's all bengali culture from there I moved to Kothagodam it's all telugu and it's total telangana culture there from there again I moved to Hyderabad it is like um you know uh, semi um it's it's a, a metro uh, city now so but at that time also it was like, so it's different culture there and from there um i was always raised to um have an open mind uh, i mean so keep an open mind take what comes and adopt take the goodness out of it not just you know concentrate on so if you keep on concentrating on the bad then you can never move forward it you always complain so take the goodness from there and then you know um expand that one and take that one. so that's what so and then i got married to Uh, married into a very very orthodox family very orthodox so they don't even know what um dance is or what um kuchpudi or bharatanatyam is because theirs is like um a very orthodox brahmin family where in all they do is like they have every day um one thing or the other puja and they're like very very back then it's called even now it's called madi which is like they have to do certain things in a certain way and then i ke i went there with an open minded or with little free uh, thoughts of mine and that it was a cultural shock for me then so it took about one year for me to understand their culture or should i say their um a way of living things or you know cultivating things or getting used so it took one year one and a half year i'm still learning you know uh, it's always is you know one thing which i have learned is you have to learn every day you, you unless you have that zeal of learning you cannot look forward for next day so you have to have that so that's that's one thing and then i came to narish my husband he doesn't know what dance is and then he's like what is it it's like it's a taboo and then later on he understood that this is one of the uh shoda show pacharas to you know god himself and then he says okay that and that's where i started my you know dance teaching of that particular form to different kids in and around um us or in and around uh, boston that's where i first landed in uh, massachusetts and then it was cold 
very cold <laughs> um, inside and out. What I mean is you don't have people around, uh, your people around you. When I say your people, your cultural um, known people are, I'm an Indian, so you don't see that that often Indians lying, going around like in India. So I had to take what I get, I guess. And then I went to temples. You have uh, temples all over, even in the US. So I, I went to temples and that's where, okay, this is how you know. And that's where I started. Okay, I teach dancing. If anybody's interested, please. And then my main motto then, now, and ever would be teach what you know in form of culture. Like, you know, I teach Kuchpuri and Bharatanatyam. The main goal or the purpose is to edify people, kids, younger generation, what Indian culture is. It's not just a way of life. It's, it, I know it, it is a way of life. Uh, it's not just a culture per se, it's a way of life. So now after five years or six years in Boston, I moved to Cleveland because of my husband's job. And then I started from scratch again. And then now um, I have, you know, kids who come in a daily basis to learn from me and then I'm happy with it. And apart from that, um, as I told you, I did my IT side also. I did my PGBCA in the computers. And then I, um, you know, the biggest advantage, should I say, is I wanted to know what is there in it, if I'm interested. So it's like curiosity. So we sometimes we, curious it doesn't no absolutely <laughs> that thought. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So then um I wanted to say, okay, why why don't I go into that field also? Now I'm not a big uh person and I'm not big into coding or anything, but I still wanted to know what it is. So and then the best way to do is going as a QA in there, quality assurance. So I want a good quality whether it is dance or in you know um it field to be to come out for the other people to know and learn so i started developing this side of my uh, you know um i should say passion as well and then i became a qa lead in a um you know fortune 500 company right now which is in ampress financial so that's that's where i am right now so i'm doing both no, that, that really helps us segue into our next segment, which is Kam Ki Baat. We talk uh, about your work and uh, really, you know, you've outlined what got you excited and interested in uh, technology. So can you, uh, you know, for anyone that's out there interested in pursuing this path, can you kind of spell what are the steps that are necessary to take? Uh, how do you get started? What kind of education? What kind of skills do you need to know and build? Um, I'm talking both hard skills and soft skills, technical soft skills. skills. Uh, so can you kind of just, you know, uh, going back your, uh, and looking at your own journey, if you had to retrace those steps, could you help us understand how you got here? The first thing I would say you should have is that problem solving skills. Like, you know, if you see a problem, how to how to get to the bottom of it uh, or the path. So that is the main struggle. You know, if you find out the, if you find out what the issue is, that is the first one and how, how to solve or how to come to a better conclusion is the second one. So half of the battle is to know what the problem is. So if you have that kind of a attitude towards um, any, uh, per, not just IT field, any um, thing, then, and if you are interested in towards like little, um, you know, knowing into computers, what it is, um, soft, software skills. So if you if you learn a little bit of some kind of like C plus plus or C, uh, those are uh, you know languages which we have currently. So if you if you learn those, that would be your stepping stone. So once you learn it, you don't have to pursue you know like a, a developer per se. But if you know that, any education never goes waste. I know. So whatever you learn, it will never go waste. So it's always there. So if you have learned a little bit of that, or if you have a little zeal towards it, okay, let me try and do this one. Then, you know, there are so many courses out there uh, with the click of a button. Now everything is there in Google or chat GPT, or, you know, you have that one. So first edify yourself as to, if you know what you want to become, 
that is the half of a battle i would say and then if you want to become or go towards it educate yourself as to what you need to do so go um, research like you know what courses they are in even in uh, you know it is tric or many colleges summer colleges they do offer two to three months courses or six week courses start from there learn that so and then if you feel that okay maybe that is the you know uh, thing which i need to pursue or I, i'm you know, trying to like it or i like it then take another step going further do certification courses and then you have you know you did build up a good resume like you started here and then there should be a, they, there are so many companies out there for sure who gives break to the first person so uh, the main goal to find your job is not for money at that point the first break so if you get that break then that's it you are good so start working on it prove yourself that this is what you're going to do so for me my first break i got from adnt and they gave me and then uh, i moved on it was long distance so it was difficult then i took a break for you know 5 years because i had my kids and then again my first break was given by um, you know ampress financials i'm so thankful that so they gave me the break and then now i'm a qa lead and i owe all to my company and it's so good i mean there are companies like that so you no know, first step is what you need to take we'll try and give you a push a small you know little you know push towards the air and then you would do wonders so the, as i told you you need to know what you are going to be or at least take that first step do like you know about 2 to 3 weeks course that's where you start see if you're interested then go beyond further and if anybody needs something else um in regards to pursuing this kind of a career please you know um contact me i can definitely help you in that way but yeah that that's where i would say and then you would definitely do wonders if you have that zeal of learning that's where you have to start learn that's wonderful advice coming from you somebody that's traveled that path you know um achieve achieved all those milestones the certificates that education um and you really hit the nail on the head you know you have to have that problem solving first and foremost um that passion for problem solving yes that's great to know so that how do you juggle uh everything that you do you are a dance teacher you spend hours and hours during the week teaching your kids bharatanatyam kuchipudi and then you have a full time job and you're a mother to two wonderful girls and and you're a wife and you just how do you do it i know it's it's always a struggle and i think it's a blessing for a woman that you that that is inbuilt it's like you know uh, for a Uh, for a um, um, a robot we just built everything for us i think god made us that way i think we can take so it's so said that the more it's been given to that person who can take more so god knows what it is so for me it is a struggle i agree it is a juggling uh, at, uh, it's always a juggling act but you need to set your priorities and what is your priority your kids your uh, your career your um you know your um, or your husband or you know there is no r it's like okay that's why i say i believe in my culture so that's where it all hailed from i would say so i strongly believe a person's personality starts from your house how you manage your surroundings that's where that's what you can teach others also you don't do that way you can't teach that way okay so morning i become a mom uh, until 6:37 then i keep another hat as a it professional go work until 4:30 then i become a teacher teaching my uh, younger you know kids um, my students uh, dancing and then in the night i became um i become um what should i say a, a baker or a, a person who cooks so <laughs> feed my family and then in the evening i just relax and take time and so it's like 
part of a life or should I say um, you just have to set your priorities that's what I said so at that time you have to be that and after that you can go and do something else so set your priorities correct think which is important for you at that particular time and then do that one and then rest of them will fall in place and they will understand so like for me I'm blessed with my two wonderful daughters and my husband who understands me very well although it didn't start out that way I had to you know make him understand what this is and then now he's a wonderful 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 person and he's my strongest pillar I have right now so yeah it's coordination and cooperation and also understanding no hats off to you for making bringing that change about you know um, it's always said that there's a successful woman behind a successful man but I think in this case it's uh, your husband definitely has to get that credit so absolutely yeah that's great um We'll talk about how do you make time for your special interests, your hobbies besides dancing? Is there anything else that interests you? Um, how do you make time for that? What other special interests and hobbies and talents are you gifted with? And uh, is there any opportunity where you're involved in the community uh, with, you know, with all the gifts that you have and giving back to the community? I would like to involve more in the community for sure with the uh, the talent which I have or should I say the gift or um, blessings which I have uh, for sure. Um, I'm trying to, um, you know, go and teach little underprivileged kids and all, but with, with the busy schedule I have, I'm putting very little time towards that, which would hopefully change in, in coming futures. Maybe that would be my, see, my kids are in such a stage that they are, they required me more at this particular stage. Um, they, are, they both are uh, teenagers, so they're becoming, you know, one is a raising senior, other one is, you know, going to be a high schooler pretty soon. So they, their demands are different, so I have to attend that. Um, when it comes to uh, other skills I have, I don't know, should I say skills or interest? Uh, it's more so an interest. I love and I always been um, very intrigued with this, uh, you know, what do you call painting on saris or on fabrics and all of that, or should I say the designing aspect of it? Or, um, I shouldn't say fashion designing, but I should say different way of wearing your attires or outfits or maybe combinations or all of that. I was always uh, like, and then I think that comes with the territory uh, for me because I'm a dancer. You have to think about that aspect of it. So dance is all four, Angika, Aharya, Vachika and Satvika Abhinaya. So the, first, the second Abhinaya and Aharya Abhinaya, which also plays a very, very important role. So how you present yourself. So, and that, where I think my interest towards, um, you know, all of these maybe came into picture, I don't know, but um, I like to try different, different outfits or not per se Western because I can't carry Western that much as I, I do carry um, Indian, but that is another aspect of mine, which I wanted to try and see if that, you know, mingles with me. But yeah, um, that is one thing. And all of these, you know, fine arts, or should I say um, visual arts, is what I am interested in. So dialogue delivery, performing, or you know, theater arts, all of this. So the, again, these are all from one book, I should say, which is Natya Shastra, and which, which has all of these you know, um, art forms imbibed in that one. So maybe I can take one. So I, I cannot become master of everything. At least one, if I can master in it, so then maybe I'll think about other ones. So I'm still in a very, very learning stage, Anu. So still very bottom of my, you know, so very, but very humble of you to say that. It's, you know, <laughs> that it takes a lot of humility, I'm sure. Uh, how do you accomplish all this um, on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, what are the things do you do that, you know, uh, you need to, uh, in order to take care of your own self, your mental, your physical, your emotional, your spiritual health? What do you do? So that not only are you able to do, accomplish all this on a day-to-day -day basis, but also, uh, you know, continue to give back uh, to your family, to your community. Uh, how do you fill your own cup? 
I would, I mean, again, um, you have to take time for yourself. If not, uh, then you will, you'll get tired. And you will get, you won't give your 100% to what you want it to be or to, to, to do what you want to do. You can't give your 100%. So I'm trying to, again, as I told you, I'm trying to still build up or, you know, work towards it. But at least 15 minutes in a day, I think you should think about yourself or sit um, quietly without um, any distractions and just concentrate on what you're, you know, within. When it's, I'm, I, again, I'm a very, very, um, I should not say um, a qualified, I, I'm not a qualified person to say this, but I think you have to concentrate on what you want to become in future as to as a person, not as a professional, or I want to become a, a wonderful dancer or a wonderful IT professional, or not, not like that, as, as a person. So who do you want to be? Like, not idolizing anyone, but do you want to be a good person? You want to be a calm person? You want to be a, um, a well, um, you know, educated, I should not say educated, well, um, well versed in so many other, you know, things. What do you want to become? So what is your end goal as a person? As a person is what I think you should concentrate in those 15 minutes of time, which is, and then probably that gives you a bigger picture is what I think. And then exercise, take care of your, um, you know, physical being. And that is also very, very important, especially with this, all of the things which are going around right now. Every other day you, you hear one new, um, you know, something came up and that is affecting so many people whatnot so i think healthy life is a wealthy life you know i think that should be a one one's motto and then and just eat healthy not too much of oil <laughs> eat healthy keep yourself uh, you know well uh, in in a way that you you should be able to teach or you should be able to tell others so yeah that's that's one aspect of life no, that's wonderful. You, uh, you've really helped, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of women understand the importance of self-care and also how do you prioritize. So it's not just, uh, you know, instant gratification, thinking about what you're accomplishing the next day and where you're headed uh, professionally or uh, or even with the skills that you have. But um, on a day-to-day -day basis, how are you constantly improving yourself? And that really uh, comes from a space of quietness and self-care. So that's wonderful. Sudha, any parting words uh, for our audience? I want you to speak to all the women out there who are on their different various planes um, of, of their journeys, right? Um, and there are a lot of women that feel like imposters in today's world, feel that um, you know they haven't done anything to, to feel appreciated or uh, you know they feel like a lack of sense of achievement. Um, simply because they have chosen to step away from the hamster wheel and, you know, get off that career track to take care of their families. Uh, I know a lot of women like that who are just amazing in what they do and they have just such amazing skills, but there is that sense of dissatisfaction and that we tend to usually see where the kids are kind of grown up and they look back and say, you know, uh, what did it, all this add up to? Usually um, it's not them. Uh, I know it's the surroundings which make them feel that way. See, if you believe in yourself and if you do your 100% towards that one, the rest of all of the things will fall in place. And the, the sense of dissatisfaction sometimes comes and goes. But if you think that is correct from your perspective, then it is correct. But again, this all depends on your priorities, not other people's priorities. There are thousand people who say, then this is right, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong. But what is right and what is wrong to you, you will decide that. Or not, no one else. You and the, your immediate family. You should not get influenced by others. Take good things from others. Learn good things from others. Don't take the bad things from others. Don't take bullying. Don't take negativity. So first thing I would think is I will not do negativity today. 
no negative aspects, no negative thinking, no, no, all positive vibes, positive vibes. And that's, that's helping me. And I'm sure it will help others also. If you are good, I oh know, rest of all the things, you will see good in them also. Okay, so again, one small negative thought will spoil the whole day or will spoil. So it's like one small rock will create those ripples. It's the same way. That small rock in you is that negative aspect. So if you, if you have that small negative aspect in you, rest of all, all you see is negativity. See the positive side of it, and then you will go further. You do your 100%. You give your 100%. You believe in your values. Rest of all, things fall in place for sure. And then I believe in my culture. That is the biggest part of my, uh, you know, um, my whole life. I believe in my culture. I believe in my tradition. And that's what I'm trying to inculcate in my kids or in my students. Kids meaning not just two of mine. All of my students, those are all, whoever comes to me, I give the same. So believe in what you believe in. Have that set prioritized and then, then you can teach others and think positive. You will give positive vibes to others. And once you give that positive vibe, the sense of satisfaction comes automatically. Yeah. And then more, if you feel that I'm not doing correct, then probably it is not correct. Think twice about it. Sit at one place, concentrate on what you can do. Again, this comes with, um, uh, what should I say, the problem solving aspect of it. So every, every woman has that. Every woman has that. That's what I said. Women's are in, all women are inbuilt with that kind of a nature. We just have to take that one out. Why do we have so many other, um, you know, we've been blessed with, we are the only person who are blessed with giving a life to another person. Why? Why is that? Because God believed in us. So you also believe in you. You believe in yourself. Everything will fall in place. Take positive things, leave the negative things away from there. And then you see your world is different. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for uh, those words of uh, wisdom, conviction. I know that uh, knowing you, uh, you know, that comes from a, a very deep, uh, you know, space within your heart uh, because you live those, you live by those values and, you know, it reflects in your attitude and your interactions and everything that you do. So, Sudha, on that note, thank you so much for being part of Sarvagun Sampan. It's always an honor, always uh, delightful to connect with you. But I'm just so happy to have you on this show and uh, give you an opportunity to express your views, your uh, thoughts, your perspectives on so many things and inspiring so many women out there uh, who are, uh, you know, looking at their own selves, their, their own personalities and wondering how they can improve and, you know, get to that next level. So thank you so much. And thank you, Anna. No, thanks for having me. It's a wonderful opportunity. And uh, also, um, I'm honored that you, uh, you know, reached out to me. And I'm really, really happy that I could say my two cents in this, uh, you know, in this world of um, constant change. In this world of constant. So I uh, just believe in yourself and then take positive things from everything. Keep smiling everything will fall in place. And thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. And I really appreciate it. Thank you, Sudha. Have a good one. Thank Take you. Bye-bye. Yeah.